All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Raw Intuition Inside Scoop. We've got another terrific guest for you today, and this is one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, his numbers definitely do not reflect the value and information and knowledge that he is sharing. So I really wanted to bring him on to the channel, uh, share with you his experience of transitioning to a raw vegan diet and lifestyle, uh, and share his experience, what he has learned, uh, some tips, and some inspiration for you guys to hopefully adopt a healthier plant-based vegan diet and lifestyle for yourselves, uh, for the animals, and for the planet. So uh, I want to introduce you to Al from The Raw Evolution. Al, welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to say thank you for having me on to both you and your audience, Matt. It's uh, truly a pleasure, and I'm honored. Well, we're glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, basically, uh, I think we uh, could just go over kind of first off, uh, how you got into this lifestyle. And, and was it for any certain reason, or, you know, health conditions or anything like that? Well, uh, it all started in uh, 2013. Uh, just to give you a little background, I used to be a former bodybuilder and uh, competitive power lifter. So I was a whole different person, just to say the least. I was very large. I'm only about five foot eight. I was 230 pounds. And I lived the lifestyle that is expected of a bodybuilder and power lifter. So we're talking like high calories, high protein, high supplement, that whole typical gym life, let's call it. Yeah. And, um, you know, God bless, I didn't have any real health concerns at that time yet. And I emphasize yet. Mm. And um, somebody, came, somebody came into my life and mentioned that I was living a very toxic lifestyle. And specifically, they pointed out that a lot of my caloric intake was coming from sources of dairy. Now, at first, I brushed it off just like any average person normally would. And, uh, you know, they just pointed out that, you know, I was consuming a lot of yogurt, a lot of milk, milkshakes, cheeses. And for those of you that are familiar, whey protein is a constituent of dairy. So I was, you know, totally into those whey protein shakes and, and, and so on. So a lot of my calories were coming from dairy. And when they pointed out that I was consuming so much dairy and that it was very bad for me, you know, it, it sparked a little, um, call a little curiosity in me to look into that one step further. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I mean, it all starts with that little spark. And so over the next week or two after that, I uh, started looking into the internet and, and researching the effects of dairy on human beings. And I was just blown away, um, as I'm sure perhaps you have and many other people are starting to uh, come, come into this information that, you know, dairy is, is, and let's be clear, when we're talking about dairy, we're talking about uh, cow milk. Right. Um, dairy is, is one of the most toxic things that a human being can put into their body. Yep. It, it, it's coated in such a way. Um, that is completely unrecognizable to the human body. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to come across these individual mind-blowing points about dairy, it literally was a no-brainer for me to instantaneously drop dairy in all its disguised forms. Because let's face it, dairy comes in a lot of forms. Sometimes you, you, you can buy, for example, uh, a, a, a soup, a can of soup, and in it there could be some, some, some dairy products, yeah. know, cream or whatever, right? So dairy is, is found in a lot of products if you're not paying close attention. So I made it a point to drop it in all of its forms instantaneously. And uh, it wasn't long before I started to notice the benefits. I mean, within a couple of weeks, my sinuses started to clear up. My skin started to improve. My breathing, my whole, my whole respiratory system really started to transform to a level that I had not experienced in years, at least probably back until I was in my early childhood, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 
maybe it was my own nature or maybe it's just human nature that when you start to notice profound changes in your body from one single lifestyle change, you start to become very hungry for more and more information yeah. and trying to find even more ways to improve the quality of your life. So the next step for me was, and, and this is pretty much exactly how it started. I thought to myself, if the dairy of another animal is not good for me, what about the meat of that animal for which the dairy comes from? Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't know where I was going with this. This was just a thought, but I looked into it. And then I started to learn about how acid forming meat is like meat is the most and, and meat in all its forms. So this includes fish. This includes chicken, duck, turkey, beef, lamb, pork, you know, even exotic meats like ox and, you know, God knows everything else that humans have come to uh, accept as food right. in today's age. Yeah. I started to look in it and meat is one of the most, if not the most, acid-forming foods in the body. Yep. So when you consume meat, you are completely acidifying your body to such a degree that it's virtually irreversible in short-term periods. So, you know, this was very profound. And then I started to learn about how meat basically putrefies in the body before it has a chance to exit quick enough yep. and, and, and in a timely manner. And when you observe species that naturally consume meat as part of their natural diet, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. see that their entire digestive system is night and day different from ours. Yeah, I mean, there is not one comparable aspect between them and us. We are, we are so different in that regard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, these things, they, these were just so profound in, in their, in, in my understandings of these, of these points that it, it was a, it was a no brainer, Matt. I mean, quite frankly, I literally over the course of about maybe a month got rid of all my meat intake. So here I am about two months in to a lifestyle change. I've given up dairy yeah. as a no, bra no brainer for me. And then my next uh, trajectory was to get rid of all the meats. And I basically went from eating, you know, meat every single day and pretty much at every single meal mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. to eating it once a day, every other day, maybe twice a week, once a week, um, once every other week. And then literally in about four, maybe five weeks, I was meat free. And, uh, and, and just to be clear, I was animal product free. Mm -hmm. And personally, I've never really been into honey myself. Um, I've never really had a sweet tooth on that kind of level that I just needed like pure sugar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, honey was never a real issue for me. I was, you know, maybe I've had honey once a year in that, in that time of my life. Yeah. So yeah. to go without honey was nothing for me. And so I was vegan without even really knowing what vegan was. This was just a natural tra trajectory for me. This was the direction that my life was just going into. And, uh, you know, um, the, the next thing for me, Matt, as I continue to, to look into this subject of health and wellness a little bit further, I started to learn a little bit more about the chemistry of food and how... Um, Cooking food and applying heat to food modifies chemical and molecular uh, compositions. And in my life and in my state of being at that time, I was riding so high on these lifestyle changes. I was noticing such profound benefits that I just wanted to continue even one step further and I decided that I wanted to look more into and experiment more with, at that time, to me, it was raw food. So I put that in quotation because at that time, you know, it was just a, a whole new experience for me. Mm -hmm. So I started to incorporate more and more fruits and vegetables into my diet whilst eliminating other, um, let's just say, less than optimal food choices. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I just started feeling better and better. And, uh, you know, here I am three years in. I wake up every morning energetic, ready to take on life with no regrets, no, no uh, temptations. And, uh, you know, life just gets better and better every single day. It's, it's truly amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and I can really relate to your story. It's funny, we have a lot of parallels between our, our two stories on how we got into it. Um, right. So how long, I guess, uh, did, how long were you a vegan, bef- like cooked food vegan before you went raw? And then what were like the main benefits that you saw just from switching to raw or from switching from a, a standard diet to the vegan diet, and then after that, what benefits, what additional benefits did you see by going raw? Right, right. So, um, as I mentioned, the dairy and the meat aspect was probably, in, 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 in as a whole, it was probably, let's say, two to two and a half months. Okay. So, first and foremost, I, I eliminated dairy, and I, I dairy was instantaneous. Like, I, I literally, the next day, woke up, and I was completely dairy-free. Mm-hmm. That education was so, um, so all-encompassing for me. It was so profound. It was so, um, you know, life-changing for me that that was a no-brainer. Yeah. And then. The meat was about a, uh, you know, maybe about a month later after that, it took me about four, maybe five weeks tops to eliminate meat in all its forms. Um, so I guess at that point, about two and a, let's just say two and a half months, just to be on the safe side, give or take two and a half months, I had rendered myself vegan mm. without with, without, quite frankly, even knowing what veganism was. I mean, you know, growing up, we all heard that word being thrown around. Yeah. We all associated that word with weird people. I mean, we're just being frank here, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I, here I was, a vegan, two and a half months in, not knowing that I was a vegan, not knowing anything about the atrocity that is taking place um, with these beloved animals of ours at the yeah. hands of human beings. And, uh, you know, I was just looking to improve the quality of my life. And so one of the biggest differences that I noticed at about two and a half months into this lifestyle change of mine was my whole respiratory system was so opened up. It was so clear. And I, I mean, at that time, mm-hmm. at that time, it was such a night and day difference from from where I was previously. Like Matt, I used to walk maybe fifty feet and I'd be out of breath. I was I was two hundred and thirty pounds. So you gotta imagine all that weight yeah. on my body. It was just it was tough. My neck was very huge. And so I just always felt suffocated. I always felt like my 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 throat was collapsing on itself. I mean these are these are scary sensations. I can and uh <laughs> You know, I, I just continued my life this way, you know, constantly bombarding myself with more and more of these toxic food choices, uh, not really being being able to connect mm-hmm. the dots between what I was eating and how I was feeling. So the main thing was my sinuses and my whole respiratory system completely opened up. I started to begin to smell things again. Oh, my God, it was so amazing. I'd be able to walk into like a food court and go, wow, I can smell, for example, I can smell meat. I can smell spices. I, you know, somebody might, you know, let some gas pass in front of me and I can actually smell it again. I was like, Oh, you know what I mean, man? Like this was, this was so such a novel experience for me. Um, so my snoring as a result of my sinuses started to eliminate my wife started to tell me because you know, although I wasn't diagnosed mm-hmm. clinically with sleep apnea, I know that I was a sure candidate for it yeah. because I used to wake up choking in the middle of the night. Oh man, I've got some stories, uh, Matt. There were there was times where I woke up not being able to breathe, like literally throat is completely collapsed. Yeah, I'm in a state of panic. I cannot breathe, and I'm looking to like 
dropped a Heimlich maneuver on myself at like two o'clock in the morning in the house all by myself at the time. This is before I was married. So I'm in, a, in my house all by myself and I'm literally trying to break my ribs on a countertop, trying to push air out through my throat. This happened to me on two occasions that I can vividly remember. Wow. I mean, like I was on, I was on death's basically door front, yeah. you know, knocking on death's door going like, you know, here I am, I guess, take me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, you know, my snoring definitely started to go away. And, and for those of you that aren't aware, snoring is very um, correlated to sleep apnea. It's basically just a restriction of your, your entire, entire sinus and respiratory system. Mm -hmm. So when that all opened up, as a direct result, my snoring completely went away. Therefore, I was sleeping much deeper. I was feeling more rested and rejuvenated through my sleep. I felt as though I had more... Um, energy because I was sleeping better. Uh, my blood felt like it was it was pumping better. Um, I, I remember like when I used to cut myself because I'm in construction. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know, I am in construction, and um, you know we always get nicks and cuts on our bodies all the time. I used to get cuts, and literally it would feel or look as though there was like oh man, I can't even just thick thick blood just, you know, trying to squeeze out of a cut. And then what I noticed was like, you know, three months in after this lifestyle, if I cut myself, I'd get this bright red blood just flowing right out of my skin a, a lot better. So, uh, you know, my, my blood flow would be better. My, my rest and recovery would be much better. Um, you know, I, I started, I used to have severe headaches um, throughout my, my teenage and early 20s, uh, those years. And, um, I, I totally noticed that my headaches started to go away and you know, this was just so amazing. I was, I was riding high on this and I was just looking to make one change after the next. Yeah. So yeah. the hardest change for me was transitioning from, like I said, what, what, what I, what I didn't know myself to be as a vegan at the time. Like I wasn't aware that I was a vegan. I, I was just animal free at that time. Yeah. Same thing happened to me. I didn't even, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, just I mean, yeah, you know, I, I was totally, I, I, I wasn't plugged into the social world, I wasn't familiar with YouTube, you know, uh, Canada is a very um, sparsely populated country uh, relative to, for example, where you are down in the States, yeah, and yeah. so just the population of this, these types of people is very low, so, you know, I've always been an island amongst an ocean of, you know, standard yeah. North American diet consumer consuming type of people mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> i found that the hardest part for me was transitioning from a, a normal vegan like i said at the time i didn't know what a vegan was yeah. into what i what i have found myself to be now as a raw vegan this was the the hardest transition and understandably so because we're we're born and bred into a culture and a society where you know, the kitchen is a very um, important part of the household yep. and, and everything is cooked. So, you know, to, to, to basically um, steer away from that was the toughest. And that took me about a solid two to three months. Okay. So okay. Ju just to put that into perspective, in about two to two and a half months, I gave up all animal products in, in their entirety. Mm -hmm. But to give up things like pasta breads, rice, uh, beans. I mean, all of these are obviously cooked products, grains, uh, potatoes, and all of these things. This in and of itself took me the better part of, I'm going to say three months. And, uh, you know, it, I, I tackled it in the same way that I tackled, um, the other lifestyle changes. It was gradual. I, I never went without any food. I always had, you know, fruits and, and, and vegetables to add in as I eliminated other things. I think that's very key. Um, some people, you know, get overly ambitious. They start eliminating too much mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. actually replacing a sufficient amount of nutrition in its place. Right. right. And, and start feeling negative um, effects of this, you know, very early on. And then, you know, they come up with excuses, perhaps, why this isn't working out for them. And they're just basically setting themselves up with failure. Luckily, without any guidance, intuitively, I, I went down this road of 
introducing more and more fruits and greens whilst eliminating, um, you know, more and more uh, cooked foods, refined foods, yeah. um, mm-hmm. such as I was consuming um, in my vegan lifestyle at that time. Okay. And I got to say, uh, Matt, and especially to the viewers that are watching this, that my biggest health benefit changes came shortly after making this additional lifestyle change into raw veganism. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about a fruit-based diet because let's face it, you're not going to run on vegetables that have virtually no calories. Right. Your, Your sustenance, your energy, your calories are coming from fruit, from sugar dense, carbohydrate dense fruit. So raw veganism should be a fruit based experience in my opinion. Yep. And so this is where I started to notice the biggest lifestyle changes. I mean, just to name a few there, I could, I could spend an hour (laughs) mentioning all the different ones, but just to name a few, I started to notice my respiratory and sinus system even progress into another level. I started to become the first guy in the room to start sensing and noticing things. I can sm- smell cigarettes from like literally a mile away downwind. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I could be walking with some friends and going, man, somebody's smoking something right now. And then everybody's like, no, I don't smell anything. And then we go and then, you know, there's a group of guys standing at the top of the street having a cigarette or whatever, right? And I can smell that. Or I can walk into like a grocery store and maybe I've never been there before, but I can tell, for example, right away where the produce section is, where the mangoes are, you know, when when we get into more exotic fruit like melons and pineapples and tropical fruits like papayas and, and you know, even more exotic fruits like durian, which are very odorous. I can smell these things from a mile away. Um, So I I was really excited to experience this additional upliftment of my respiratory system. Other things um, that I can just briefly mention is, again, my sleep, which was significantly better already, Mm -hmm. is so much deeper now. Like, if there's a noise, a legitimate noise at night, I hear it, I wake up, but Barring that type of an event, I sleep without any disturbance. Like literally, I can fall asleep in a certain position and wake up in that exact same position seven, eight hours later, six hours later, whatever. Yeah, I notice yeah. that the amount of sleep that I need is is more um, um, condensed. So just to clarify what I mean is I can sleep six hours. And although I know that that may not be fully optimal for me, maybe seven or eight hours is optimal. But what I'm saying is in six hours sleep, I can experience the same amount of rest that perhaps previously would have taken me eight hours to achieve that same amount of rest in. Um, My, my, my energy levels are (laughs) unmatched unmatched yeah. in my, in my line of work, uh, Matt, I, I work with a lot of younger, um, 20 year old guys, um, in, in, in my line of construction, uh, work and these 20 year old guys, God bless, you know, they're young, they're, they're full of, you know, animal products, uh, animal products, <laughs> they're pumped up, they're hopped up on coffees and energy drinks and everything. I mean, you know, first thing in the morning, they're hyped and ready to go. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. I love them all, and they and they know this because I tell the, this to them directly. Yeah. But as yeah. the as the day goes on, they start to fade, and with every additional blueberry smoothie, with every additional banana, with every additional mango, with every additional bit of melon that I have, mm-hmm. I just gain and gain and gain. It's endless, 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 endless amounts of energy. Wow. I mean, it's it's truly, truly amazing stuff. I, I, I highly recommend for those uh, of, of you that are out there in the audience watching this, that if you're slightly curious, if you've heard anything about raw veganism, stop making it something you've heard of and something that you're curious about mm-hmm. and actually go about the necessary steps in your life 
whatever they may be in your current situation, to get more and more into a fruit-based type of diet and uh, just experience the limitless amounts of energy and ambition and will and determination and mental focus and clarity and just overall love for life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And I, I'm just curious, what, with being around other construction workers, you know, that are, construction workers are usually known for being, you know, really buff, you know, manly men. What sort of reaction do you get from them on, on this sort of a lifestyle? Do they give you a hard time or are they receptive to it? Or? Well, let me first begin by saying that I've been in construction for the better part of 20 years now. And, um, I mean, with no ego, it, full disclosure, I'm very well known in the con construction industry. I mean, there's, there's not a job site that I go to where I literally don't know 75% of the people in, in, a, in, a, in an area, like in my city, of a population of about maybe 3 million people, I know 75% at least of the construction workers. Okay. I would say 50% of them on first name basis even. So in the last three years, and just to clarify that now this is three years that I've been a raw vegan now. As a matter of fact, on May 22nd, which is fast approaching, will be my three-year anniversary wow. of 100% raw veganism. So in the last three years, my, my, the point that I'm trying to get at is that the novelty of my lifestyle for many of the people that know me has slightly worn off. Mm. It's not a surprise anymore. It's not, you know, this, this, you know, crazy, outrageous thing. People know me. They see me. They expect this of me. They, they understand where I'm at. And, and they, see, they see what comes as a result of this from me. But many times I do come across people that don't know me. And I'm, I'm very friendly and I always take the time to share, you know, information with people who seem eager and curious to know about my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The, the standard typical expectation or stereotypical expectation of construction guys is that they're manly, they're buff, they're tough guys. You know, they love their meat. They love their beer. And there's no, there's no messing with it. I mean, it's just cut and dry, and that's how it is. Yeah. Well, I obviously bring a different perspective into that equation because I may not be buff. I may not be, you know, macho and, like, you know, have this tough guy persona about me, which I used to have at one point. When I was 230 pounds at five foot eight. Mm -hmm you know, lifting outrageous amounts of weight. I used to be that kind of person. I used to exude that kind of image and personality. But now I am, uh, you know, very open and I introduce people to my lifestyle. I love sharing my food with people. I insist that I share my food with people. I always take extra food with me. And, you know, I've become so good at picking properly um, ripened fruit, that my fruit is always top notch, mm -hmm. sweet, juicy, and delicious. So when I share this with people, you know, they are so amazed. And, you know, then the next day they tell me that they went with their wife to the market and bought, for example, the same cantaloupe that I referred them to, or the same mangoes that I referred them to, or bananas, or strawberries, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. that may be that I, that I shared with them the day before. I, um, I'm very lucky and blessed to say that in that type of environment that you alluded to, where you're surrounded by guys that are macho and buff and, you know, tough guy type of personalities, I'm very lucky and blessed to say that I have had a very great and large impact on these people, specifically with those that I tend to be working with for a longer term or a longer period of time, say weeks on end or even a few months on end. On these people, I always, always, always have a great impact. And I'm very lucky and blessed to be able to spread this knowledge and and in essence, change their lives in that way.
it's uh, it, it's an amazing feeling. And and they in turn share with me the benefits of what they've noticed as they began to make this change as well. That's terrific. And that shows why it's so important for those of us that are practicing this lifestyle to not be hermits and, and you know, not share our experience because when you share your experience, you have the opportunity to change the life of somebody else. And, and that, you know, the ripple effect of that can just touch so many people that you don't directly have to come in contact with. So, so yeah, that is, that's great. Yeah, you, you hit the nail right on the head there, Matt. I think, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's very key. That's, that's exactly the way it needs to be. Um, if, if you're making lifestyle changes, and, I, and I'm speaking more so direct to the audience here, that if, if you're making lifestyle changes here in your life and you're noticing amazing improvements in the quality of your health and the quality of your overall life, mm -hmm. you need to share that with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers, associates, acquaintances, whoever you come in contact with. And at the same time, you always have to remember that how you come off, how you decide to express yourself to people will ultimately be the key factor in how they perceive you and how receptive they're going to be to your message. Mm -hmm. You know, many people, many of you will agree that, you know, you, you, you're watching YouTube and you're watching people share their lifestyle changes. And many people are coming out saying that ever since I became vegan, you know, my family has basically disowned me. I mean, essentially disowned me for the most part. I mean, you know, they, they, they don't want to eat around me. They don't invite me to dinners. They don't, uh, you know, they, they don't approve of my lifestyle change, whatever. We've all heard these things, right? Yep. And people say that, you know, they're getting into conflicts at work with coworkers about this lifestyle and getting into heated debates and arguments. And that overall veganism has pigeonholed them from society. Man, oh man, I could not disagree with this more. Yeah. This, this lifestyle change of mine has made me more open to, to people. It's brought me bigger and better friendships with people. It's improved my social experience with people, my friends, my family. I've, I've touched and impacted so many people in my life. My parents... Um, I mean, I'd love to share this with you. My mother and my father, my father's 63, my mother's 61. They are about 16 months, 100% vegan to this day. Wow. As, as an impact that I have brought to them, they have seen. So, I mean, I, I want you guys to wrap your head around this. My mother is 61 and my father is 63. That's six decades of a standard North American diet. They are 100% vegan and to the tune of maybe 80 to 90% raw uh, vegan, consuming fruits and greens virtually all day long with maybe a, a cooked plant-based meal three or four nights a week. Mm -hmm. So, wow. you know, my wife... Um, who, I've, who I've been so lucky to be married to for almost about five years, going on five years now. She made this lifestyle change a couple of months after I made, made it. So she's you know, been impacted. Mm -hmm. Her family is also being impacted. They, they are also fraught with all kinds of blood pressure, cholesterol, and um, uh, heart disease type of conditions. They're starting to notice significant improvements in those areas. All my friends are all... I, I, all my friends are all incorporating more and more plant-based foods into their lifestyle and eliminating more and more. I attribute this to the way that I chose to go about spreading this message. You know, you, you can tell someone that they look nice in 500 different ways, some of which will be offensive, mm -hmm. some of which will be very... Um, complimentary. So it, it all depends on, 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 you know, what you're feeling inside your intention, your love for people. And you always have to remember where you yourself came from and never forget that we were all non-vegans at one point. 
-hmm. Now, I know there's the exception of the person out there who was raised vegan or whatever. I, you know, God bless you. But for the most part, we were all raised non-vegan. And so we, we, we can't lose sight of that and always approach people with respect, mm -hmm. and at least initially. And then, you know, if, if, if the conversation goes in a direction that's unpleasant or whatever, then you can decide how you want to deal with it. But I, I virtually have not had this problem. And, uh, I, you know, going back to your original point, I think it's very key that we all come out and express these lifestyle changes that we're noticing. And as a whole, bring veganism to light for the masses. Yeah. You know, veganism is more than just, you know, uh, animal compassion. It's a complete... Um, it's a complete change of how you view this planet, both in terms of obviously compassion, but also your health and your willingness to change society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Um, and, and just, uh, I'll touch on this really quick. Um, going back to how some people have, difficulty with the people that they interact with when they talk about this this subject um i think your your uh your approach to it is perfect i mean i think it's it's the best way to go about it you know you you approach people with respect and just that understanding of knowing that you used to be in that position so to expect them to all of a sudden switch their entire lifestyle and, and thinking process, you know, just because you might have mentioned to them that what's working for you, uh, it, it, it could take them some time in order to have that sink in and to really uh, manifest into something, some actual changes in their life. Um, but there's people, people ask me if, if, they, if I think that it's best to be an aggressive vegan or to be more of a, you know, more respectful and, and not so outspoken. Uh, I think that it's, I think obviously both have their time and place um, and some people respond better to one way over the other. Um, but, you know, it, when you're in person, I think compassion is always the best way to go uh, because, you know, when you're in person, uh, people take it more directly. You know, if you want to be a, an aggressive vegan and promote your message more aggressively, I think YouTube and the internet is a better way and a better venue for that sort of a message because you can still make your points and you can still give it across as you want to, but when somebody is watching it on a computer screen, they don't take it as directly or as personally, and so they can still digest some of that information without feeling like they're being attacked. And, and then, you know, if they feel attacked, they're going to shut off. They're going to block you out. So when you're in person, you know, be more compassionate and be more open to their feelings and, and what they're going through and, and just kind of give them some information that they can take home, uh, kind of look into and then go from there. But, you know, so in person, in my opinion, and kind of like you've shown that has worked really well for you and, and the people around you is uh, a message of compassion and and respect. So, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, in in my personal um, lifestyle situation, being so busy with my work and you know other things that I'm involved with, YouTube for me is not a priority. It, it, it just can't be at this present time. Yeah. So. I'm in a position where my number one means of getting this message out is on a personable level, one-on-one -on -one with the people that I interact with in my life, mm -hmm. whether that's friends, family, coworkers, or etc. cetera. So in, in, in the way that I tackle this and in the way that has worked for me is I've always come to understand that the person that you are standing in front of is another human being just like yourself mm -hmm. who is sensitive, who is, um, you know, living and breathing 
they're virtually identical to you for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you choose at that moment to introduce veganism to them in an aggressive way, in, in a possibly demeaning type of way, well, obviously nobody would be able to convince you for the most part on anything with that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. So to expect that by going down that road with someone else, you're going to be successful. Frankly, you're, you're misplacing your sense of reality because people don't respond on a personable level to aggression. They just, they just don't. Yeah. There, now, like, like you said, there are some people that may respond positively to that. But as a whole, let's be frank, we need to approach people on a human level yeah. and understand yeah. that some people are just not aware and that everybody is on a different level. I was able to drop dairy in all its disguised forms overnight. I don't know if I could necessarily expect another human being to make that same dramatic lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. I have to be understanding of that. I have to be compassionate to that. But I am a firm believer that if I educate that person, if I exemplify from my own current state of being to that person, the benefits and the, um, I don't want to say scientific information, but the details of what the understanding is specifically about dairy. If I'm able to, to translate these, these important points to this human on a personable level, my likelihood of affecting them is far greater, in my opinion. And I can vouch for this, that I have been very successful with one-on-one -on -one human beings in my life on a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember, every human being that you come across is a potential vegan. Yes, we can argue that they were born vegan and it's our natural state to be a vegan, but they're not living a cur currently a vegan lifestyle. So they are a potential for a newborn, of being a newborn vegan, let's mm -hmm. call it. Yeah. So... You want to make sure that whatever you say to them is effective because when they leave, they could be another source of information to the people that they have in their lives mm -hmm. who you don't have contact to. So every single person that you affect is a potential spreader of this message is a, is a potential source of getting this message out there. So in my opinion, and through my own lifestyle, um, demonstrative examples, always approach people with love and respect and understand that everybody is on a different level and never forget where you came from yourself. And virtually the sky's the limit. I mean, it, it's, the proof is in the pudding. I, I, I can speak on my own personal experiences that this has worked tremendously for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind of going back to uh, your transitioning period, did you experience any sort of detoxification symptoms or any uh, so-called uh, healing crises or anything like that? Right, right. So you, you touch on a very good point here. Um, there's not enough exposure to this side of the lifestyle, which is raw veganism. A lot of people will demonstrate uh, indirectly, perhaps, on their videos that you know raw veganism is you know this really happy go lucky type of lifestyle that's you know right from the get go everything is perfect. You're feeling amazing. But um, not enough attention, as I said, is brought to healing and detoxification. I mean, let's face it, up until this particular lifestyle change, we've lived a very toxic lifestyle, we, uh, a toxic diet of chemicals, preservatives, enhancers, stabilizers, putrefactive meats, um, you know, mucus forming dairies and such, all, all these foods that we were never designed or intended to eat. Yeah. 
And so when you make this lifestyle change, you are now affording your body to finally, on a serious level, start eliminating these built up, backed up toxins from within deep tissue inside the human body. Yeah. And so, you know, I always, I always give this quick example, and I'd like to share this with you, and that is you can have a human being living on McDonald's for three meals a day. So every meal that this individual has is McDonald's. Morning breakfast, mo- breakfast in the morning, lunch and dinner is straight McDonald's. And then one day this human being says to himself that he's going to make a lifestyle change and decide that he's going to make his own burgers at home. So he's going to buy his own ground beef. He's going to buy his own bread. He's going to buy his own condiments. He's going to grill up his own burgers. He's going to put together the sandwiches. He's going to, he's going to cut up his fries and so on and make his own, you know, McDonald's equivalent at home. Yeah. Well, that right there is a significant lifestyle change. So although that change is not, you know, let's say healthy, we could argue that it's healthier. Yeah. And that in and of itself may create a a change of expression within his body where now all of a sudden he feels a little bit better than he was on the McDonald's. And now he's going to go around saying, guys, listen, this is the new diet. Forget about McDonald's. Start making your own burgers. You'll never feel better. This is the way to go. And this is it. So obviously we from the outside can see that this individual has a long way to go towards health and wellness. But within his closed minded state of reality, he is noticing some significant lifestyle, lifestyle changes in his health from making this change. So, you know, the next change for him might be to, you know, stop making burgers and start making, you know, uh, whatever, pasta dinners and, you know, uh, meatloaf and, and, you know, Wellingtons and stuff, whatever, all kinds of these gourmet type of animal product foods at home, and then find that he's noticing some health changes from that. And then the next change would be what, you know, he'd start eliminating one meal of, of that kind and incorporating, you know, a salad and then noticing that difference and going around saying, guys, you know, two, two meals of steak a day and a salad, that's the new diet. So as you refine your diet and, and go into a more simple uh, fruit-based type of dietary lifestyle, you start noticing more and more health improvements. And every change enables your body to heal and detoxify one step further. But when you get into raw veganism, which a, a fruit-based raw veganism is the simplest of all diets, it is the most harmonious of all diets to the human being. I mean, there's no question that fruits are the most nutritious and healthiest foods for the human being. Every Anybody who is who is even slightly knowledgeable in the field of health will tell you this. Once you start getting into a fruit-based, raw vegan dietary lifestyle, this is when there is so much energy freed up in your body that previously had to go towards things like digestion and just trying to sustain some sort of equilibrium in your body yep. that now, now it can finally, you know, start sweeping out the cobwebs, start sweeping out the junk that was, you know, tucked under the rug or hidden under the bed, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And when these toxins which are stored in the liver, that are stored in the spleen, that are stored in all the little ribs of the colon, the diverticulum, all these little pockets where toxins can get stored or, or stashed away by the body. I mean, let's face it, when, when, a, when a certain chemical goes into the body and the body doesn't know what to do with it, yes, most of the time it will eliminate it, but it may also just stash it away somewhere. Yeah. And it, re, it can resurface, you know, 20 years later in the form of, God forbid, some sort of a dis-ease, some sort of ailment, some sort of, you know, problem mm-hmm. later on. And so a fruit-based raw vegan diet is very cleansing to the body on that level. And when you start to experience that dietary lifestyle change, what will naturally and inherently come with it are 
occasional blowbacks that you will experience. And basically, these are moments in, in time where your body has re-exposed some of these toxins back into the bloodstream, back into the GI tract, and now it's like, whoa. I'll give you another quick example. If I force-fed you a piece of rotting, moldy, nasty, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming nauseous just thinking about it, but if I force-fed you some meat that was of that type of description right now to you, what would happen to you? First of all, if you were lucky enough to even get it down past your gag reflex, you would instantaneously experience diarrhea. You would instantaneously experience food poisoning for that matter and all the symptoms that go with that. Yeah. Well, in all the pockets, all the little crevices, the flex jewels of our colon and the little um, you know, nooks and crannies of our spleen and our, and our liver, some of these toxins have been stored. So when they are finally kicked out and released back into the body, on the way out of the body finally, naturally you're going to experience things like cold and flu-like symptoms. I mean, they can be as simple um, of experiences as itchiness, rashes, yeah. you know, maybe some aches, maybe some pains, maybe some headaches, um, you know, maybe some dizziness. I mean, that's on a, on a, on a minimal end, on a very a mild end. Yeah. On a higher yeah. end, you can experience like full out fevers of which most recently I experienced. Um, you know, I'm talking like high end fevers, um, coughs where you're just bringing up very old mucus, hardened mucus. Um, you know, mucus tends to change color as it gets older. It goes from clear to white, from white to yellow, from yellow to green, and then green to brown. And then in, in chronic conditions, you can even bring up black mucus. Yeah. I mean, guys, I don't mean to disgust you, but we're talking about the human body here. These are these are natural occurrences in today's day and age. Yep. And so once uh, once once you start getting into these moments, aka healing crises or detoxificational periods in your life, expect to see some of these pretty nasty and disgusting things finally come out of you and embrace that. Mm -hmm. Know that that's a good thing, that that's finally coming out of you. I mean, what would be the alternative to, you know, shove that back in you and say, no, I want it to stay inside. I mean, that's you know, what pharmaceuticals do. Well, it, no, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> I mean, you know, that, that, that's a whole nother, uh, topic in and of itself. Obviously pharmaceuticals have been known to be, suppressive and not uh, fundamentally um, curative um, in, in any regards. Um, they don't even, I mean, the whole pharmaceutical industry doesn't even, they frown on up, upon the word cure. It's all about treating, diagnosing, suppressing, uh, deferring, I mean, and, 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 and surgery, right? Yeah. So it, it, it virtually, when you get sick, it boils down to take this white chalky pill or, you know, let, let, let's drug you and cut something out of you. Yeah. Um, nothing good comes out of either of them. Mm -hmm. They all have mm -hmm. side effects and, and long term um, issues that can come about with regards to them. So, I mean, you know, let's get back to nature. Let's get back to natural healing. Let's get back down to regenerating damaged tissues and uh, just a, a happy, simple, abundant life mm -hmm. for which raw veganism is a perfect example of. Yeah. Yeah, so when you were going through this, uh, what sort of things um, were you experiencing and what did you find most helpful um, as a course of action? Did you, did you just basically, did you do anything or did you just let the body do exactly what it wanted to do? Right, so in the summer of 2013 is when I began this raw vegan uh, endeavor, let's call it. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly, shortly after that, I started to get a lot of uh, mucus coming up. So I started getting coughs where I was hacking up, you know, all kinds of thick, uh, goopy phlegm. Um, I, you know, I, I also experienced some bouts of diarrhea, which, you know, I want to be clear because a lot of uneducated people tend to associate a fruit-based diet inherently with diarrhea. Yeah. You know, and, and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, diarrhea 
is a reaction that your body produces as a means of trying to flush out your colon. So it introduces a lot of water into the system to just wash out the colon. Yeah. So something was in the colon that the, the body wanted to reject. And by, by using the means of diarrhea that it has as one of its tools, it attempted to flush it out. So eating fruits is, it doesn't cause diarrhea. Now, fruits can be cleansing to the colon. They can resurface toxins for which your body will react to with diarrhea in an attempt to flush them out. But fruits themselves don't cause diarrhea. So I was experiencing some on and off bouts of diarrhea, which I know to be indicative of attempts that my body was trying to make to flush out basically the GI tract in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to get some headaches off and on, very mild. Remember, I, I am coming from a background of a lot of headaches. So, you know, they, they would come back mildly as they would come and go. And I attribute that primarily to, um, you know, movement of wastes in and out of my head. I mean, you know, I, the lymphatic system is something that I highly recommend everybody educate themselves on thoroughly. It's a very simple system, and I'm just a layman construction worker up here in Toronto, Canada. So if I've been able to grasp these concepts and these understandings, anybody can, as long as they afford themselves the patience and the time to sit and, and, and research these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they can be explained in very simple ways. But all the while, all of these things that I experienced, primarily initially we're talking about like the headaches, the coughing, the, the expelling of, of, of mucus, the diarrhea. You have to, in my opinion, you have to embrace these things. You have to accept them and let them run its course. Yeah. Can I ask? Like, yeah, yeah. When you, when you are experiencing these headaches, whenever I hear somebody that is experiencing headaches, the first thing I think of is constipation. So were you constipated as well during during your previous lifestyle? Yes. yes. As a matter of fact, that's a great point, Matt. And I was what was going on with me was within the first two or three months of me being 100% raw vegan, I started to notice swings in constipation, mm -hmm. diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Constipation, diarrhea. And in between there was, you know, few occasions where I was, let's just call it regular. Mm -hmm. um, so my body was trying to find this equilibrium, this, you know, um, this, this fight between detoxification and, and regularity. And so, yes, there was a, a, a direct correlation between my constipation and the headaches. And it's interesting that you make that point because, I mean, we are one system. So oftentimes when you're experiencing an issue, a problem, an ailment, a discomfort in one part of the body, it is directly related to another part of the body right. as a whole. Because as I said, we are a working system. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, going back to, to what I was what I was saying was that I, I highly recommend that we all embrace these sensations of detoxification or healing crises. I mean, these are just terms that basically uh, exemplify these uh, tougher times as the body is cleansing itself. Um, you know, don't suppress it. Let it run its course. Um, there's been two or three occasions in, over these three years where I've experienced like cold and flu type symptoms. Um, oftentimes, while I'm experiencing these, like I said, in the two or three times, there is a fever present. I mean, a fever in its simplicity is your body trying to raise its temperature so that your skin can tar start to sweat out. I mean, that's what happens. When your body temperature rises, mm -hmm. you start to cool off by, by the highly evolved and advanced characteristic that we have of being able to sweat through our pores. So uh, that's exactly what a fever is. A fever is your body trying to push something out through its skin, primarily. Now, yes, I know a fever can serve other functions as well. Mm -hmm. If there's a viral load within the body, or a, a bacterial load within the body that's not meant to be there, a fever can su suppress that or, or address that. Yes, I understand. But primarily, primarily, a fever is meant to raise the body temperature so that the, the skin can expel toxins out through the uh, uh, pores. Sweating is a very underrated 
a form of detoxification in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, I highly recommend whether you're raw vegan or vegan or whatever lifestyle or, or state of being that you're at, definitely incorporate sweating as a, as a part of your regimen because many, many, many toxins are expelled through the pores of the skin. Very underrated in my point. I, and, uh, you know, I, I, one more thing to finish off this point uh, in particular, Matt, is I had one healing crisis about a year and a half ago, which was very intense. And, you know, I talked about some of the mild um, healing crises or the um, detoxificational symptoms. I had one that was very, very intense, very uh, painful. And, you know, first of all, I feel like a brand new man as a result of it. So I don't mean to deter anyone from this. I'm just keeping it real and trying to explain to people what they should be prepared for. It was the fall of 2015, or sorry, uh, the fall of 2014. So this is about a year and a half ago, uh, more so. And what happened was I started to develop a burning sensation in my hands and in my feet. Hmm. And at first it was at first it was annoying. At first it was kind of you know uh, uncomfortable until it started to really progress and amplify. And it literally got to the point where my hands and feet were on fire. Like literally imagine somebody holding up onto your hand hot blazing coals. Hmm. My hands and feet were on fire. I couldn't walk. I had to take almost two weeks off of work. This this lasted about a week and a half. Wow. So that just that just goes to show how toxic parts of my body were, that it took that long for my body to finally be able to address this and, and rid itself. I mean, imagine a house that is so packed with garbage that it takes a crew of eight guys one week to empty out. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a dirty place. That's a messy place. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it got to the point where at night I couldn't even sleep. The only thing that brought me comfort was washing my hands and feet in a very highly concentrated solution of baking soda and water, which we all know baking soda is very alkaline. Yep. So bringing alkalinity to the surface of my hands and feet helped a little bit and then this was really ridiculous but it was the only thing that helped was taping ice packs to my hands and feet at night at night was when this sensation really got intense like beyond tolerance of any kind and for about i would say a week steady i had to literally tape around my hands and feet ice packs just so i could get like a half an hour of shut eye until the ice packs would thaw, yeah. leave a pool of water in my bed, and then I'd have to get up and swap and change the ice packs out. Now, I attribute, like, if we're to break this down and say, okay, well, what was going on here? Mm-hmm. Based on my findings, based on my experience, this was a, um, a pull and a push from my thyroid. My thyroid, which always was down. I was always cold. No matter how big I was in my in my former years, I was always cold. I always had difficulty sweating. I had brittle nails. I had, um, you know, body regulation issues. Um, I had a hard time losing weight. I had a hard time gaining weight. I had a hard time metabolizing foods. Um, I've come to learn that the thyroid plays a primary function in all of these regulatory mechanisms throughout the body, yep. and uh, primarily the, the, the heat and, and the thermodynamics of the body. And what was going on, in my opinion, was that my thyroid was trying to come back online. And as a result of this incident, I'm happy to say that I sweat instantaneously now I don't have cold hands and feet anymore. Uh, The thermodynamics of my body are always regular. I can be in frigid conditions and start to feel cold much later. 
I can be in super hot conditions and feel discomfort much later on. And, um, you know, as a result of this, my thyroid has definitely come back online and is operating, I'm going to say, more optimally than it was before on a, on a significant level. Yeah. So that, that, that was my most intense detoxification experience. Wow. Very uncomfortable. And I did nothing, I did nothing but embrace it. Yeah. I didn't take any medication. I didn't take any, you know, advice from any doctors or anything. And this is just my own experience. This is my own uh, you know, it, uh, basically way of dealing with things. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, it, it passed never to come back. And, and I, I feel night and day since that, you know, I mean, it's, I, I let my body do what it knows best to do. Yeah. Uh, what popped up in my head right away was you being in construction. Did you also, I mean, were you exposed to like any sort of chemicals that you may have absorbed into the into the skin that the body was trying to release after after you cleaned it out maybe or I mean not not that it isn't your thyroid I'm sure that was part of it but the the chemicals on, in the hands were something that just kind of popped into my head I mean you touch on a great point Matt I am in construction I am surrounded by dust and, and chemicals and odors no doubt no doubt I mean you know and, and, and the hands and feet are the most porous. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people have great difficulty sweating through any other part of the body, yet their hands and feet are always sweating. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I definitely give merit to, uh, you know, that indication that you're bringing to light. I would say it, it, anything is possible. It, it could very well be possible. Um, I, I don't know. I would have to say I don't know. Some, some toxins could have got in my body. Yeah. whether it be through my skin or maybe through respiratory means and my body was trying to release it through my hands and feet, it is possible. Um, I mean, it goes without saying that up until this lifestyle change, I was living a 100% toxic life. Whether these were recent toxins or old toxins, my body was trying to expel them nonetheless. Yeah. I didn't interfere with it. I took time off of work. I laid in bed for the most for the most part of this, resting and not, you know, creating any distractions within my body, letting my body run its course. I mean, you know, for those of you that have pets, you know that when your pet is feeling ill, it will just go in a corner and huddle up. You're not going to see it, you know, running up and down stairs. You're not going to see it, you know, eager to go outside. And, you know, you're not going to see it running around looking to play. And, you know, it's not going to be very social, it, you know. Or hungry. Or hungry for that matter. Absolutely. The, 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 you know, animals exemplify this perfectly. And so this is what is natural, letting your body run its course. And one thing that I have, uh, you know, great appreciation for is that I have become very in tune with my body through this lifestyle change of mind. Yeah. And I, I can understand for the most part what my body is trying to tell me. And I, I, I let it do what it, what it needs to do. You know, um, I think that's, I think that's very key. I think it's a, it's an art that is unfortunately lost mm -hmm. in today's day and age. And that's just being in tune with your own body. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why it's, it's so exciting to have channels like yours and, and people like you that are showing people the, the true nature of detoxification and, and really finding your way back to a healthy body. So that's, uh, it's really encouraging. Um, so, Kind of to, to wrap it up, I think we're getting a little uh, over an hour here. Uh, what, what basic practical tips would you give for somebody that is interested in um, transitioning to this sort of a lifestyle and, and just any of, the, any of the basic tips that, that you found that worked for you when, when doing this? I have one tip. And it's the only tip that worked for me. Therefore, from my life experiences, this is all I know to share with you. And that is education. Mm -hmm. If you can learn and educate yourself on how dairy interacts within your body once you consume it, if you can learn how meat 
putrefies and rancidifies in your body because you are not a meat-eating species. If you can fully wrap your head around these things, if you can understand how there is a reason why fruits are the most easiest of all foods to digest within the human body, the reason is because your body knows exactly what to do with it because that is what it was designed to process. If you can educate yourselves in these fields of knowledge, that in and of itself should be so profound, it leaves you with no choice but to make drastic changes in your life, in my humble opinion. One other thing that I just want to say in closing is it wasn't for a, a whole year later. It was a whole year later after I was 100% raw vegan when I learned about the horrible acts that take place within these slaughterhouses, man. I mean... What a, what a world we live in. What a world. I was 100% raw vegan. I didn't even know it. And then a year later, I learned about the cruelty of murdering animals mm. and the, the, the enormous volume of what is taking place. I mean, the stats of like hundreds of millions of animals are, are being killed a month. At, at the end of every year, one human being is responsible for the death of like 1,000 animals. I mean, I could be off with these stats, but th they're up there. You yeah. know, let's not, let's not quibble over a few dozen here or there, man. Thousands, millions, billions of animals are dying constantly at the hands of man. And unnecessarily. You know, I, I'm, uh, unnecessarily, man. I mean, God, help us. Everybody is on a different level. Education is what worked for me. I think it is what will work for you. But as a whole, take into consideration the big picture. And, you know, when I, when I discovered this, I literally broke down in tears. I was so ashamed. Now, I'm one year, 100% raw vegan. A year and a half vegan in general. I find out this information and I break down into tears, completely ashamed of myself. That I live this type of life. So, although education is what worked for me and I highly recommend it as my number one means for you guys to make your lifestyle change as well. Understanding what is being done to these animals by the second unnecessarily at the hands of the human being may be itself something so profound and enormous in its entirety that, that that could help you make a lifestyle change in your lives. Um, not enough can be said about that topic. I am happy and glad to say that today I am three and a half years completely animal free compassionate as it gets to animals, I have converted and affected hundreds of people throughout these few years, and I am confident that the world is making a paradigm shift towards compassion and consciousness towards the atrocity that is taking place to these poor, innocent, defenseless, defenseless animals every single day. And we're on the right path. And I'm proud of both myself, all the people that I have touched, and the many of you that are out there that have also made this lifestyle change. Keep on trucking. Keep on pushing this message. You know, it's very important to get this out there. Every person that you impact is a potential amplifier of this message in their circles. And let's make this world a better place for everyone, including our beloved animals. Really well said. And I'm glad you brought up 
the animal situation. Um, one last question. Did you, was there a certain um, source of information that really opened your eyes to this? Uh, I know for me, I saw earthlings and that I, yeah, I broke down and in tears and I just couldn't believe that this was going on and I didn't know it. Um, was there a certain source that you came across that, that really got you to understand this? Yes, with regards to the animal compassion aspect of it, which came to me one and a half years after I made my vegan lifestyle change, it was Gary Urofsky's uh, most popular speech. That is what I ran into, okay. and that is what introduced me to the, um, the terrorism that has taken place to these animals. Yeah. And, um, you know, everybody's different. I later on saw the earthlings video that you're alluding to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everybody's different. You know, one video may have a different impact on someone else. Uh, Gary Garofsky is very aggressive. He's very blunt. He's very to the point. Yeah. Uh, but you have to understand that I had already been vegan for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So, I was more receptive to that aggressive approach. Yeah. Perhaps someone who is completely unaware of veganism and is living an SAD type of lifestyle may be deterred from that kind of video. I don't know. I could only speculate. Yeah. But uh, that was that that very that very much so impacted me. Um, and I'll, I'll never forget that day. Those feelings. I was upside down for a week after seeing seeing that and coming into that knowledge. Upside down for a whole week. Yeah. And uh, like I said, you know, I I take great comfort in knowing that I don't contribute to that anymore and haven't for several years. I I don't intend to ever 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 contribute to that ever again. I'm a I'm a whole new being of love and light and positivity. And I'm grateful to know that I am making a positive impact, a active impact on people's lives in my own personal day-to-day -day life. And I'm forever grateful for that. And once again, I highly encourage everybody to take action in their own personal lives in every way that they can. You know, don't clam up. Don't be shy. Don't hold these things in. Approach everyone with love and respect understand where you yourself came from and collectively let's let's make this world awesome once again right yes very well said all right man i feel like i could keep this thing going for another couple hours i feel like there's just so much good information that we could get out of you so maybe in the future we'll have to bring you back and and touch on some of these things like detox and, and maybe the animals a little more uh, it'd, be, it'd be my pleasure, Matt. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Do you have any resources that people could find you at if, if they want to learn more about what you're putting out? Um, you know, guys, I'm, I'm new to the whole social media type of thing. Um, I've got an email. You can contact me personally at Revolution, spelled R-A-W-V-O-L-U-T-I-O-N, Revolution at writeme.com. I also have a YouTube channel of my own, The Revolution, and you can check me out there. At the present moment, that's all I have. I'm a very busy guy in my life. I've got other um, things that I'm prioritizing at this present time, and so these are the means by which you can contact me or stay in touch with me. And uh, you know, if you so choose to, uh, you know, pursue these avenues, I'm more than happy to share my time and my knowledge with each and every one of you. All right. Perfect. Okay. Well, Al, thanks again for joining us and sharing all this great information with everybody. And, and all of you watching, I really encourage you to go check out, subscribe to The Revolution. Uh, you won't regret it. Uh, Al does amazing editing. He's got amazing information, and he, he communicates it so, so well. So, so go over, subscribe to this channel, and, and we will catch you guys in the next video. 
Uh, always remember to follow your raw intuition. Thanks again. Detoxify your mind and body. Be the change you want to see. Small steps towards living better. Small steps to where I want to be.